Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on which part of the world you are from. We are going to start in just in just a minute, or maybe a maximum two. I'm looking at the number of attendees and waiting for the numbers to stabilize. I see the numbers that keep increasing. We already have more than 100 um, participants. Um, so welcome everyone to this uh, webinar, which is on industrial uh, water reuse. Um, and today we are going to be looking especially at perspective from emerging countries. So we're going to have very interesting talks uh, from India and from Namibia in Africa and also from Thailand. So I hope that uh, you, you will learn something interesting uh, with this webinar and uh, something that uh, there will be something relevant to all of you. So I'm very happy to see this, this very nice attendance. Um, Next slide, please. So this webinar is the second one that we are organizing of a series that we call On the Road to Chennai 2023. Um, the first webinar that we had was on water reuse in the United States, which was held in February. And uh, we will have um, another one coming up soon. Um, on May 12th, so please uh, look forward to it. Next slide, please. So let me introduce our water reuse uh, specialist group on, on the IWA. Uh, if some of you are connected with IWA, you can go to IWA Connect and then uh, you, can join, uh, you can join our group. So our water reuse specialist group is actually the biggest of the space specialist group of the, of the IWA. Um, and so we are intending to make contributions to the field of water reuse and in particular by organizing events like this webinar or like the conference, our next uh, conference that will take place next year in India. Next slide, please. So indeed, uh, it will take place in January of next year in Chennai. That's why we have this series of webinars to pave the way to this conference. This will be our 13th. Uh, international conference and if you're intending to uh, join us for that conference in in India uh, the weather will be very nice in January and uh, I hope that uh, several of us will be able to uh, join us and please make sure that you submit your abstract by May 15 we are just extending the the, the deadline so we hope to get uh, we hope to see a lot of you in person in Chennai so Please do so. Next slide, please. Just a little bit of webinar information. Uh, it will be recorded. It will be made available on demand on the IWA website. Um, next slide. Uh, very importantly, the chat box, you can use this for general requests and for interactive activities. If you have questions, can you please use the Q&A box? Uh, because uh, it will help us to organize the questions uh, accordingly. And then after the four speakers, we will answer your questions during the dedicated Q&A session. Next slide. So uh, with this, I'm ending up my introduction. And now let me introduce my, uh, my first uh, my first speaker. So uh, my first speaker for the, the day is, um, is Josef um, Landsteiner, uh, who is the Technology Research and Development Director of the Wabak Group in Austria. And he is also our chair. He is the current chair of the Water Reuse Specialist Group of IWA and a very long friend of mine. Uh, Joseph has 35 years of expertise in the field of industrial water reuse. So who would be a better person to, is to start this webinar by giving us a short introduction on the topic of industrial water reuse? Joseph, I pass it to you. Thank you, Olivier. 
Um, please decide. But first, we're here in Windhoek, James and me, we are at the training center of the famous new Gap water, a portable reuse facility. But today, as you mentioned, we are talking about industrial water reuse. Next slide, please. It's uh, slow moving. I see, see the first one. Yes, now uh, the drivers for industrial water use. Uh, of course, very important uh, major driver water shortage caused by climate change, population growth, industrialization, and developing and emerging economies. A very important driver is, of course, boost in water supply security. Imagine a shutdown of a production facility could cause an enormous financial damage. Further economic reasons are reclaimed water is normally cheaper than municipal water. There are sometimes reduced wastewater discharge fees and resource recovery is an interesting option. Policies, regulations, and guidelines, of course, are also a major driver. For example, the treated wastewater reuse policy for Tamil Nadu, which was issued in 2019 in India. Then, last but not least, brain Joseph, protection. Joseph, 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 can I, image? Joseph, yes. can I, can I stop Sorry. you? I think your voice, your voice is breaking a bit. Do you have a problem with your connection? It wasn't breaking just now when we were talking, but suddenly it is. Obviously, we have a problem, yes. You have um, a problem with the I, audio. Are you able to solve it? Now it's better. We, we, we switched off the video. Is, is it now better? It's better. OK. Then um, I continue. A green image, uh, clients, customers are willing more and more to pay uh, for sustainable solutions. And it's also a reputational risk minimization. Water can be a constraint upon growth. Next slide, please. The major industrial reuse applications, um, it's Reuse of reclaimed water, uh, re reuse of reclaimed water in as cooling makeup and boiler makeup, and reclaimed water reused for various purposes such as transport in mining or uh, washing in, in food industry. Next slide, please. Sources for industrial water reuse are first of all municipal secondary effluents. It's a drought-proof resource. And uh, on this photograph, you see a second, secondary effluent reservoir for water reclamation and reuse in, a, in India in a refinery and in a fertilizer production facility. Then we have industrial in-house on-site effluents it's secondary effluents from effluent treatment plants, various pre-treated and untreated process effluents, and also cooling power and boiler blowdowns. The third source is effluents from one industry reused in another industry. Uh, James will, will present an example for this. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, a short case study in West Africa in Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa. Two, 211 uh, million in, in inhabitants, the largest economy in Africa, worldwide 12th largest producer of petroleum. And the Dangote Group, founded by Aliko Dangote, is one of the largest company in, companies in Africa. They have industrial activities such as oil refining, but they are also in agriculture. And the Dangote refinery and petrochemical complex is, is under construction, will be commissioned in end of this year. And uh, it's uh, located at the Leki Peninsula, southeast of Lagos. And the water management is done by robot treatment, 
Freshwater from a lagoon, then effluent treatment, then water reclamation. Next slide, please. This slide shows the Dangote water reclamation system. We have here six different wastewater streams, for example, cooling tower down, contaminated rainwater streams, sour water, oily water streams, fantastic and sanitary wastewater. I do not want to, to go in detail, but we have then six advanced treatment systems for these different uh, wastewater streams, very advanced and specific, and then the blended effluents um, treated in the water reclamation plant consisting of reverse osmosis and uh, demineralization uh, with mixed beta ion exchangers and the reclaimed water is reduced as boiler feed water. And the reject is treated, I will show this later, in a comprehensive uh, treatment system in order to protect the environment. And then it's, it's going to a sea outfall. Next slide, please. This slide shows the design parameter for the oily wastewater stream, um, oil and grease in, in the raw wastewater, 1,000 to 5,000 5, milligrams per liter. And the standard is stringent, less than five milligrams per liter. Um, COD, 500 to 2,100 uh, in the treated effluent, which is the the, the in, inlet to the reclamation plant less than 50. Next slide, please. These are the design parameters for the reclamation plant. Uh, very important parameter is silica, 15 in the RO feed, and only 20 micrograms per liter in the reclaimed water in order to avoid scaling in the boiler. The water is mentioned is reused as boiler makeup water. TDS total dissolved solids 2600 in the RO feed and 0.1, it's also a stringent standard, 0.1 milligrams per liter in the reclaimed water. Next slide, please. This shows the Angote water reclamation plant. I mentioned reverse osmosis and mixed bed ion exchange. The permeate of re reverse osmosis one is going to reverse osmosis three. The permeate is degassed in a degassing tower and then it's polished in a mixed bed ion exchanger. The reject is going to for brine concentration to RO2 and the reject is treated in a comprehensive uh, treatment system as I will show this later. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, this uh, photo shows tanks. Uh, these two tanks are for cooling tower blow down each 5,000 cubic meters. It's, it's not so small. And this one is the ultrafiltration feed collection tank with 3,000 cubic meters. Next slide, please. The next slide is the ultrafiltration process unit. In the installation phase, I mentioned the, the, the plant is still under construction. Next slide, please. The next slide shows the installation of the reverse osmosis process unit. You see it done during the pandemic. So there were no interruptions uh, due to the pandemic. Next slide, please. This slide shows the RO reject treatment, the RO2 reject is treated in a multi-stage system, chlorine dioxide oxidation, powder activated carbon absorption of COD, lamella clarifier break chlorination for the pool of ammonium, then disc filter, and it's blended with this clean effluence, and then it's pumped to the sea outfall. Next slide, please. Yes, um, the key issues for successful industrial water reuse and recycling, it's essential that water reuse concepts must provide social, environmental and economic sustainability. Water reclamation plant financing is very important, particularly in emerging and developing economies and be a, a boot model, for example, built on operated transferred. And the uh, next issue is 
in order to promote water use and recycling, longer payback periods should be accepted by industrial investors, not only three to five years, but rather than eight and 10 years. Uh, next is risk, which is avoided by higher industrial water supply security or reliability should, should be valued in feasibility studies. It's normally not done. And this would create much more information and reuse projects. Uh, next slide, please. Essential is, of course, a proper water reclamation plan design based on the use of existing experience, sometimes Pilot testing is necessary. Multi-barrier systems provide a high degree of safety. The safety is increased by new robust technologies such as ceramic membranes, proper concentrate reuse and or disposal concepts are more and more extremely important. The slogan brine mining means for example, selective re recovery of salts, minimum liquid discharge, or even zero liquid discharge seems to be a trend. The condensates from evaporation uh, have a very good quality and can be reused for high demanding reuse purposes. And last but not least, proper operation by well-trained and skilled personnel is very important. Training not only at the on-site, also outside of the own plants and audits with regard to operation and maintenance provide valuable feedback. Yes, that's it at the moment. Uh, thanks for your attention. Next slide. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Joseph, for your participation. Uh, James, before you, you will be the third speaker, but before that, can you try and reset your connection or may, may, maybe you log out, log in, because there were some, some sound issues. Uh, while I let you guys uh, handle this issue, I will move on to our second speaker, um, who is uh, Dr. Nupur Bahadur, and I'm uh, with a senior fellow and head of the Center of Excellence on Water Reuse at the Energy and Resource Institute in New Delhi, India. So I'm very happy, of course, to get the, the, the Indian uh, perspective because this is very relevant. Uh, to our upcoming uh, International Water Reuse Conference, which, which will be in Chennai. Uh, Nupur is also the vice chairman of IWA uh, India, and she's a water technology professional with 22 years of experience in advanced oxidation and zero liquid discharge. Uh, Nupur, I will pass it to you, and we are all looking forward to hear more about how India is ensuring industrial water security. Thank you uh, and good afternoon, uh, good evening uh, to one and all who have joined from different parts of the world. And it's my proud privilege to be speaking here in the IWA Water Reuse uh, platform. And as you see from the title of my talk, so it's a very promising and, uh, and positive. You can see that yes, India is ensuring industrial water security and we have enough uh, drivers to ensure this. And I'll be also taking uh, one or two case studies in three categories like treated industrial water reuse, uh, or second category will be the reclaimed water for industrial reuse. And third will be what is the status of R&D in India in uh, industrial water reuse. So uh, the key drivers as uh, uh, Dr. Joseph has very well uh, elaborated, I would just add with respect, uh, with a perspective to uh, India that the key drivers uh, for us to ensure industrial water security is of course the rising ever rising industrial water demand secondly the water stress some areas are water stressed and as also mentioned earlier whenever there is a problem for the shortage of portable supply it is the first thing uh, the industrial water supply is cut so we have to industry has to ensure uh, that um, uh, the, uh, the water security is maintained. And very important, we have a regulatory requirement for industrial waste water management is zero liquid discharge compliance by Central Pollution Control Board of India, which means that industries have not just to treat uh, and discharge, they have to treat to a level so that they can re uh, reuse in the process. 
And next very key driver is the government of India policies and programs, which comes in the mission mode. And they are the real key drivers. Uh, the real funding uh, uh, comes from the central government, state governments, and the policies you can see. And they are the real drivers for the water revolution, I would say, taking place in the country. And the last but not the least, we have the national framework for a safe reuse of treated water, where you can see the mandates are very clear that if industry has to reuse water from low to high grade, what are the uh, quality parameters required? And similarly, if we are uh, to use the municipal treated water or reclaimed water, these are the parameters. So now coming to the first case study on uh, the first category of industrial wastewater for reuse, we have this uh, case study from IOCL refinery, Paradeep, Odisha, where you can see the uniqueness of this is that it is the largest industry what, uh, industrial water recycling plant. So um, what you see here is that uh, this particular industry, the effluents from various streams are treated exclusively and proper wastewater management facility is there and they are recycling 75% of the water. And this is the 54 MLD plant in this uh, premises. Next is the case study. Second case study comes from uh, the company, uh, the Balakrishna Industries in Bhuj, Gujarat. And you can see that uh, they have three plants, tire, power plant, and carbon black plant. Here the manufacturing process they have mentioned. And you can see from the three uh, manufacturing processes that what the high water consumption is primarily required. In this particular case of this industry, you can see the source segregation is there, the treatment is there. And the best part is that industry is willing uh, to uh, address the challenge with regular monitoring and review mechanism. And with these good practices, industry is possible uh, to achieve the reduction in water consumption by leakage arrest and optimization of water reuse. Industry is also able to eliminate the water use point by replacement of water cooling with air cooling, enhance recycling capacity, collection of runoff water, and very interestingly, the industry is using uh, rainwater, harvested rainwater, which comprises of 3.5% of the total freshwater demand. So this way, industries are setting good examples in India uh, to enhance their water reuse. Second category uh, comes when uh, reclaimed water is provided to industries. So here I am very happy to present the most talked about the case study of Surat Municipal Corporation. Surat is a, uh, you can see a, a smart city in Gujarat. It's a water plus city. And the uh, most cited example about this case is that it is treating 319, uh, the treated wastewater which is there, out of which the 319 MLD is, you can see the, uh, they can provide it for industrial reuse and in addition to that, to various other purposes. That's and good. the revenue model which you see here is the cost. The successful financial model which Surat has given is that they are able to uh, earn the revenue more than the ONM cost, which means it is possible to have the 100% ONM cost drawn from the revenue. Next example, which comes from uh, uh, Mathura in India, you can see here, this is a Namami Gange, the National Mission for Clean Ganga project. And the uniqueness about this project is that we are targeting to not just treat our National River Ganga, which expands or uh, which has, uh, which is 2,500 kilometers long, expands in 11 states of the country, but more than that, we, it is basically an integrated river conservation mission. We look at the holistic approach uh, in the whole program. And this also even aims at improving the water reuse. So this Mathra sewage project in that the uniqueness is that, that this was the first project under Naomi Gange to come uh, gain the concept of one city, one operator under HAM model. And this project uh, brought the paradigm shift in the integration of the existing sewerage infrastructure with the development of new STPs, which was missing in the earlier programs. And so, uh, lastly, the most important thing is uh, this, uh, through this, the 20 MLD water is being provided to the Mathra refinery and the company and the uh, Mathra refinery is bearing the power charges and the ONM cost. So such a PPP model is a prime example in the country.
Next is third case study in this category is of uh, Chennai. Again, a very talked about case that how uh, Chennai uh, is managing and becoming, uh, um, you can see here, okay. the best example here is that the Chennai Metro Waters, they have this 45 MND Coimbatore TTRO, tertiary treated RO plant, where you can see the they are meeting uh, the standards for reuse, also the portable standards, and they are supplying the treated water to South Chennai industrial clusters. And also they are selling the water, which means the commercial model out of uh, the wastewater is the uh, huge success in uh, some of the Indian cities. Now I'm coming to the third category, the status of R&D in industrial water reuse. Here, why it is important? Because until now, what you have seen in my primary uh, preliminary slides, that yes, industry is treating, there is compliance, there is willingness, but still somehow we are not able to achieve zero liquid discharge or become other compliance or regulatory norms simply because um, the issues, we, are, we have to understand the science, the technology behind the water treatment. And somehow in developing countries, we are less educated about this. We treat all kinds of wastewater with similar protocols. The issues of color, the COD, toxicity, the lack of shock, uh, shock load bearing capacities. These are the issues. Then we rely a lot on the membranes. So we uh, uh, come across the problems of fouling, choking of membranes, where comes the all the ONM costs. And also the ZLT compliance uh, for which um, you require huge um, effect, multi-effect evaporators, steam, and also that tertiary treatment is highly resource and energy intensive. So therefore, our endeavor as a researcher, and you can see uh, we are a research institution and a think tank of the country, and together with Namami Gange, National Mission for Clean Ganga, we have a center of excellence, and we aim to make ZLD or industrial wastewater or enhanced water reuse and to make it much, much uh, sustainable, affordable, acceptable, and compliant. So with this, uh, we have developed a technology. Here, very briefly, I'm going to talk. This is Terry Advanced Oxidation Technology. And uh, what you see here, the uniqueness is that for the first time, we are using a photocatalysis in the secondary treatment. And here you have a product, a photocatalytic reactor, where certain nanomaterials under the UV light Irradiation generates radicals which oxidize the polluted molecules. So somewhere we are targeting to actually break the bonds, remove the color, COD and toxicity. And with these benefits, you can get, achieve the improved biodegradability and all the benefits which are... Uh, so when this technology, which is currently at TRS7, um, with our 10 KLD pilot plant functional in our own campus, you can see in one slide, this technology is applicable to a large number of uh, application uh, industrial wastewater. And the best part is it can be retrofitable at pre-biological or post-biological or at polishing stages. And even the ME condensates can be uh, treated within few hours. So this is the um, importance. And when the same technology is applied to municipal sewage, this is the real municipal sewage of Delhi, um, you can see here, the same sample, the physical characteristics, you can see uh, we are able to achieve this physical characteristics. From the chemical characteristics, we are able to achieve COD less than 30, BOD less than 5, which are uh, stringently required by NGT, um, National Green Tribunal laws for discharge and for reuse. And the best part is that in this whole uh, mechanism, what you see here, the biological characteristics, you don't require any disinfection after this. And uh, the USP is that you can either polish the currently treated water or in the greenfield projects, you can directly implement this technology, which means you have possibility to bypass biological treatment and save on the resources, time, energy, and a lot. So this is, and this slide is very important because now in India, you can see we are working on micropollutants and currently we don't have the guidelines, but very soon uh, we are going to have this. So with this, I end uh, this and I would uh, like to conclude simply that yes, India is progressing and we are very much on the path of uh, ensuring industrial water security. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Nupur, for your for your nice for your nice presentation. Um, our our next speaker is is James Villet, um, uh, who is uh, who is in in Namibia. So he was born in Cape Town, South Africa, but he grew up in Namibia in the Namib Desert, and so he has always had a keen interest for water from a young age. So he has been working for 15 years in the water sector and with 12 years in water reclamation. And he's currently the plant manager at Ujam's wastewater treatment company, north of Windhoek, so in Namibia. I pass it to you, James. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Olivier. Uh, my name is James. I work for the Ujams Wastewater Treatment Company in Windhoek, Namibia. Uh, next slide, please. The Ujams Wastewater Treatment Company operates the Ujams Water Reclamation Plant in Windhoek, Namibia, uh, according to the boot contract, which is signed with the city of Windhoek. Uh, this is a triple P. Uh, it has been in operation since November 2014 with a treatment capacity of 5.2 megaliters per day. Uh, it is designed to receive wastewater from Vintuk's northern and La Friends industrial areas, where some of the major waste producers are uh, Meatco, Namibia Breweries, uh, Nakara, and Namibia Beverages. The plant was designed for operation up to the year 2035. So Ujams in this period is uh, using a diversion valve, which channels municipal waste from some residential areas to meet the design capacity at the moment. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a short overview uh, of the process on the plant. We have three different sources, as I indicated earlier. We also have a fourth source, which is a reception area. We receive uh, smaller quantities of wastewater from smaller industries, which are further downstream from uh, the plant. They deliver this through tankers. Uh, we go through a fine screen process, a grit removal process. We collect the water in a buffer tank. It is then passed through the final pretreatment step, which is a fine sieving process, uh, where the water is then mixed with uh, the recycled activated sludge in the distribution chamber. It passes through an oxic one uh, and then oxic two, and then it moves to the MBR trains uh, after Ultrafiltration, we move to uh, UV disinfection. The water is passed into our clear water storage tank and then is discharged to the Kleinwittig River. Next slide, please. So the fine screen process is uh, five millimeter bar spacing. We use a differential uh, level sensor. So when the level uh, or the fine screen is blocked, uh, it activates the rakes and then we go through some cleaning processes there. The solids are passed onto a compactor uh, to remove any excess water, which is then passed back into upstream of, of the fine screen process. The boot contract specifications with the city of Ventuk specify that we need to meet 25% dry solids at this point. Uh, the plant achievement since uh, commercial operation is averaging 55%. The grit removal process uh, is a circular flow chamber with a mixer with scraper blades installed. So this is where we remove some of the solid particles that are heavier uh, at this point. Uh, the grit slurry is then pumped to a classifier where the grit is then cleaned further and then conveyed into a skip. Again, the boot contract specifications say that we need to meet 25%. Uh, the plant achievement is 80% dry solids at this point. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the water is then collected in uh, what we call our dry weather buffer tank. This is basically a homogenization chamber. Because we are dealing with uh, industrial wastewater, the industries have different periods of production. So we have periods where we would have high pH coming into the plant or low pH. So we have the capability to uh, stabilize the pH because we have a biological process um, uh, where we are treating the water. Uh, with hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide. Uh, if there are high concentrations of chlorine, we are able to dose chemicals to, to remove that as well. Our plant loading profile uh, for COD is anywhere between 1,500 to 4,500 milligrams per liter. Uh, ammonia is also uh, one of our, our uh, factors that, that we have to deal with, which is 62 to 120 uh, milligrams per liter. 
Uh, from the uh, buffer tank, we then pump the water to our fine sieve process. So here we have a process with uh, textures that are 500 micron in size. Uh, the, the main reason why we have this uh, process in place is because we have ultrafiltration membranes. So the, the more pretreatment we can put in, the, the longer we can prolong the life of, of these membranes at the end of the day, because they are quite costly. We do uh, CIPs with uh, potassium hydroxide to remove any um, fats, oils, and grease because we do not have any of that in our pretreatment step. Um, and here again, we have to meet 25% dry solids and the plant achievement is 27% at this point. Next slide, please. The biological process consists of two trains which are operating in parallel. We have denitrification chambers which have mixers installed. So this is the anoxic tank. Uh, and this is where we are removing the nitrates. They are converted to nitrogen gas at this point. Uh, the uh, mixed liquor is then passed into the nitrification chambers which have fine uh, bubble dome diffusers on. Uh, and this is another point of efficiency for the plant where we are able to aerate the process more efficiently than uh, conventional uh, surface aerators. Uh, the design capacity here or the design uh, for the plant is that the SRT should be 12 days. We are typically operating uh, between 8 to 10 days. So we are able to reduce this, which is another benefit for, for our ultrafiltration membranes. Uh, and here we are looking to achieve uh, one ppm uh, oxygen at this point. The MBR process is uh, the main process that we have here on the plant that is uh, very different to uh, the conventional treatments or wastewater treatment plants that we have in Namibia. Uh, here we have four trains with the Z-Weed 500D membranes installed. Uh, they have a nominal pore size of 0.45 micron in size. So they are able to trap all bacteria and viruses at this point. It's a very good microbiological barrier. Uh, and this is where we are really separating the treated wastewater, uh, treated through by the biological process. Um, uh, and then the, the water is then discharged uh, to the UV process. These membranes are uh, fairly expensive. So we are constantly taking care of them with maintenance cleans where we are doing uh, weekly cleans with uh, sodium hypochlorite and citric acid in tandem. Uh, the reason why we are using both of these chemicals at the same time is that our water that is arriving at the plant is quite high in dissolved solids. So when you are dosing um, sodium hypo, which has a high pH, we, we tend to get a lot of uh, crystallization happening. And then we dose citric acid just to ensure that we don't pull, the, pull that into the membranes and plug them. Currently, we are operating with 12 minute filtration cycle, uh, 60 seconds of relaxation, and then a 45% 45 second back flush every five cycles of filtration. We conduct two recovery cleans annually. Uh, and this is when we go for a more intense cleaning where we actually switch off the membrane process uh, and dose higher concentrations of chemicals for a longer period of time to try and recover the, the membrane performance. Our plant achievement at the moment is anywhere between 200 to 300 LMH in terms of the permeability of these membranes. They have been in operation for almost eight years now. Next slide, please. Uh, once we've gone through MBR filtration, the permeate is then uh, passed to the UV unit for disinfection. This is just a second microbiological barrier, just in case we have any membrane breakages that we do not pick up immediately, we are able to disinfect at this point. CIPs are conducted here again uh, with citric acid every three months, just to ensure that we maintain the, the UV performance. The boot contract specifications indicate that fecal coliforms at this point should be below 200. Uh, the plant achievement throughout this period has been less than one CFU per 100 mil and somatic coliphage is also less than one PFU per 100 mil. The water that is disinfected is then passed to the clear water storage tank uh, where the effluent is discharged to the klein Bintuk River. Here we are supporting the rehabilitation of the upper Swako Port River Basin system. The Ujams water reclamation plant actually came about um, due to the old treatment plant not being able to meet discharge requirements. Uh, 
Um, and so in this period of time where we have been discharging uh, water that is meeting the boot contract specifications greater than 99% of the operational period, we are actually rehabilitating some of the um, upper Swakop River Port Basin system. The plant production averages 92% of the design capacity since uh, it has been in operation. Next slide, please. Here we are looking at the permeate quality and the membrane performance over this period. Uh, we are achieving COD ranging between 40 to 50 milligrams per liter. BOD5 is indicating that all of the COD is non-biodegradable uh, matter at, at this point, uh, as it is less than two milligrams per liter. The ammonia concentrations are also quite low. TKN and, and phosphates are also, also very low. When we have a look at the membrane performance, we can see that it has uh, dropped over this period since we've been in operation, but it is also indicating in the last uh, two, three years that it is really starting to stabilize uh, at around 250 to 300 um, LMH bar. Uh, over this period in, in terms of the permeability. So the membrane performance is quite stable um, and the quality, the permeate quality is also very good uh, from the plant. Next slide, please. So some of the permeate potential reuse options that we have, uh, initially there was a planned Eros golf course, which was going to utilize the water. Uh, we have also been approached by the Ventuk golf course uh, during periods of, of low rainfall uh, for use of, of our water as well. During the construction of the new dual carriage highway, uh, the water was used for dust suppression uh, during construction. There's also envisioned use of a private gantry uh, or private use with a gantry installation by the city of Vintuk, where anyone who purchases water is able to come to the plant, uh, tag a specific flow meter uh, with a prepaid installation and then is able to collect water from our site. We also know that uh, some of the informal settlements further downstream are utilizing the water for various purposes uh, where they are collecting the water that is actually flowing in the klein Mintuk River for, for, for their own private use. Uh, just a quick uh, look at the picture, you can see that I have some cattle uh, next to the plant here that are foraging on, on some of the grass that is growing there. The informal farmers, uh, cattle herders that we have uh, in our area are actually taking their cattle every morning uh, down to the outflow of the plant um, and using our water to basically uh, produce cattle uh, on site. We've also been approached by um, some mining companies from Mittel and from Lodestone, Lodstone. Uh, where they are looking to use our water in future for, for their mining operations. I've also indicated that should the water be treated further, it could also be used for formal agricultural reuse in future. And I think uh, uh, the, the importance of water reuse in, in Namibia is, and specifically Mintuk is, is very important because we have um, we have such low rainfall, we are, we are not always able to replenish our, our resources. If we were to use this in a more sustainable way, it would mean that there would be less demand on um, surface water, um, as well as uh, drinking water. Uh, and that, that would obviously mean that it would be easier to manage in, in future as well. Next slide, please. Uh, there's also the possibility for phase two, uh, where we would upgrade the plant by increasing uh, the plant capacity to 6.3 megaliters per day. We also have done investigations with biogas production through the anaerobic digestion of the sludge. We've also identified some co-substrates from the various uh, industries, which would then allow us to produce 100% of the power required on site. Um, and then we would use solar drying to, um, to dry dewatered stabilized sludge. And we've also had a look at the secondary usage of this dry sludge as filler material for construction purposes. Some of the research is being done um, by the various universities here, here in Vintuk. So the plant could potentially become a net zero emitter in future. Uh, next slide. Thank you very much. 
uh, for listening and having a look at, at taking an interest at what we are doing here in Bintuk, Namibia. Uh, we appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, James, for your presentation. OK, without further ado, let me move to the next uh, speaker because we're getting very late. Uh, we're going to finish later than we expected. Um, our next uh, and last uh, speaker for today is Mr. Varanan Lausuan, um, who is the Utility Business Development Director at WHA Utilities and Power in Thailand with more than 10 years of experience. So I'm very happy to hear about the point of view of Thailand. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see how WHA innovates to make water reclamation a reality for industrial users. Mr. Varanan. I pass it to you. Hi, hi. Good afternoon from Thailand, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Maran Nol Suwan. I'm uh, working in the company called the BHA Utilities and Power. So it's my it's my uh, honor to be speaker today uh, with all of the uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen today. So uh, we we basically the BHA uh, UP. We are actually the another side of the player in the water business. We, we, we basically, we are the investor and operator for the utilities in Thailand and also in Vietnam, uh, which uh, uh, later I, I'll present to you uh, uh, three parts of the uh, content. The first one, let me introduce you some uh, about the BHAUP, what we are doing uh, in terms of utility business. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, we have some reference project and uh, some of the, the uh, information of the Thailand uh, U2D business. And lastly, we, uh, I, I would like to introduce you to the project that we think is the, is the real sustainable uh, uh, resources for the future development in, in Thailand. Okay. So please, uh, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, about us, about the BHA UP, uh, we are actually a subsidiary in the, the BHA group in Thailand, the, the total solution for industrial uh, development. The BHA utilities and power, we basically right now, we, we uh, invest uh, both for utilities and power business uh, in Thailand and Vietnam right now. Uh, next slide, please. Recently, uh, for the utility business, uh, we uh, invest uh, not only the, the process water, but we also have the raw water management, industrial water, uh, wastewater treatment, uh, and, and some other uh, specific uh, water. And what we focus to do is the reclaim water. Uh, as of uh, last year, our management uh, water is uh, 135 uh, million cubic meter per year. And for the power business, uh, our uh, uh, megawatt, uh, equity megawatt is uh, 607 uh, megawatt last year. The power uh, business, uh, uh, we have both conventional uh, power plants and also the renewable, like the uh, solar energy, also the waste to energy as well. In Vietnam, we uh, uh, start the business uh, last three years, and uh, it's the same model in Thailand. So we have industrial estate in, in, in Vietnam. Uh, then we uh, supply the utilities, uh, water supply, wastewater to the manufacturer in, in, in the industrial zone. Also, we have some other uh, uh, municipal water business in Hanoi and in some uh, other area. In, up north of Vietnam. The, this slide will show some of our uh, utility type, uh, the, the, the water and wastewater treatment. So uh, we basically we have uh, 11 industrial zone. Each industrial zone uh, have the utility for the water supply and wastewater. Um, uh, we engineering the system uh, depend on each location. Uh, that means in some location, uh, is we have very limited of land, so uh, the system will have to be very compact. In some other area, uh, we have a lot of land, so we develop some kind of natural uh, engineering uh, uh, system like the uh, 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 wetland or uh, the aerated lagoon 
that require a lot of land, but less in terms of energy uh, consumption. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> yes, and uh, this is a uh, 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 continue from the last one. You, you see that we have uh, quite many of a uh, system uh, in the uh, industrial zone that we have, uh, including the activated uh, sludge uh, and also some of the uh, uh, aerated lagoon over there. Okay, next slide, please. So at the Berkshire UP, um, last year we got the uh, award uh, from the Stock Exchange of Thailand as the uh, uh, one of the best innovation company award uh, from the project that we call DRW, the Demineralizes Reclaim Water. Is the is the real sustainable resource for future development that what we uh, uh, have the slogan for this product. This product is actually we are not trying to uh, uh, recycle the wastewater, but we trying to thinking uh, to to make the value added to the wastewater. In 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 our in our uh, uh, thinking, uh, wastewater is not. The wastewater anymore is the is the alternative resource for the water for the future. So uh, we we claim water and we not only utilize it at the second grade of the application. We sell it back to the manufacturing at the premium price as the demin water. And this one you you see later. So this one is the last year award that we got. <clears throat> and. If uh, you look at uh, uh, about 10 or 20 years uh, before, uh, our company uh, uh, continue to develop uh, many of the uh, water uh, technology. It's not, it might not be the, uh, um, the new technology, but we try to, to promote it as the uh, player, at, at the user, like uh, in, in 2000, we, we adopt the uh, project called Vertical for Constructed Wetland with the AIT, Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand. And it's very successful. We, we introduced this kind of wastewater to uh, other community and uh, it's, it's uh, very useful to develop uh, uh, such uh, wastewater in Thailand. Uh, okay, uh, next slide please. Okay, so, so the concept of this uh, uh, water management we introduced uh, is from the three combination. The sustainable water resource management, innovative corporate culture and circular economy. With this together, and uh, we got the result of the uh, DRW, demineralizes reclaimed wastewater. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this slide show you how we uh, introduce the concept in, 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 and implement it in our uh, uh, organization. So if you see at the, the, the top of the diagram on the top is the conventional way of water management in Thailand, especially in the industrial zone. So we have raw water and then we have water treatment plant and then we send the water to industrial user. Industrial user generate the wastewater and it's going into the central wastewater treatment plant. And then we discharge to environment. Some other uh, manufacturing, they may need some uh, special water like demean water and they have to produce by themselves. So we see the pain point about that. So some manufacturing, they don't have space to expand because they have to do the utility area, okay? And also, if you see like that, we have to discharge a lot of wastewater into environment. And uh, because the concept, uh, we would like to make a sustainable development, we change the concept to the diagram B. So we uh, put the RO water unit, is the reclamation, uh, the combination of the UFRO. And then we produce the value added product from that reclaimed water. So we are not selling water at the, at the uh, uh, low, low price. We sell water at the higher price because the quality is better than the conventional water. And by this concept, you see that we can save a lot of environment in terms of uh, 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 
amount of wastewater that discharge to the environment. And we can save the investment by the government to uh, expand the uh, raw water projects because we can reclaim substantial uh, amount of wastewater into industrial use. And this one, we call this concept uh, uh, the reclamation to industrial use. In the future, we try to do uh, reclamation of domestic wastewater to industrial use. So it will be the complete circular economy concept in the future. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, by that concept, uh, we uh, make it in the uh, 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 one of our industrial estate. So in the BHA UP, we already have the largest uh, reclamation plant in Thailand. It's the standalone plant of the capacity of 25,000 cubic meters per day of the permeated water. So uh, this project, uh, we invest a lot, but it's very worth. So um, uh, uh, the pain point when after we develop the reclamation uh, project, uh, we are thinking about make it, making it more uh, uh, financial uh, feasible, meaning that we try, we need to find uh, difference between RO water and, and you know, conventional industrial water is, is not that much. But if we integrate to the mean water, if you create another value and we can sell more in terms of uh, 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 price. So this concept is a very successful model to develop uh, reclamation. We don't have to get any subsidy from government. We just uh, try to find the right of taker, the right buyer, and we develop the project. And the project is uh, feasible by itself. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is the uh, actual, the real uh, picture, the real location that we adopt uh, this kind of, of concept. You see that in this industrial estate, in this industrial area, uh, it's very uh, a circular economy uh, 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 concept because we, we have the water treatment, we send the water to a uh, factory, the factory send back the wastewater to us. We develop the reclamation plant. We integrate it to the demineralized plant and we send it back to the uh, uh, industrial user. So it's very, it's the uh, cross roof of the water management. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I think this one I already mentioned. Uh, next slide, please. Because of the concept we introduced, uh, at least the benefit is in this uh, page. Uh, the, the factory, they get the higher quality of water at the lower price. Why? Because uh, higher quality, because uh, when the water pass through the, the membrane and then the mix pair, you got the demean quality. Why lower price? Uh, because we don't have the cost of the raw water. We use the wastewater to produce the, the, uh, the high grade of, of water. Number two, the manufacturer, they can concentrate on it core business. They don't have to worry about utility pro, uh, providing. Uh, number three is the environmental impact uh, mitigation. So we can reduce a uh, sub substantial of uh, wastewater to environment. And lastly, uh, as I mentioned, this one is the future resource for, uh, for everyone. Uh, industry, they don't have to uh, take the water from the natural water. In fact, uh, we would like to get the wastewater from people to be the uh, resource of industry. So uh, this con concept is very uh, beautiful in terms of the uh, water management. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, these are uh, uh, some of the reference project that we have. Uh, the top one uh, is the largest plant in Thailand now. It's 25 cubic meter per day and uh, it decided to be the uh, UFIO uh, unit. It's located in the eastern part of Thailand. And demineralized at the bottom, we, we uh, integrate from the, the, the system on top and send it back to the power plant. Uh, next slide, please. Um, okay, this is uh, similar to, to the, the project that we mentioned that uh, uh, the capacity is uh, 
the top one is uh, 5,000 cubic meter per day, and the, the bottom one is uh, 3,500 cubic meter per day. And it's the uh, water supply to the power plant. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is another project in the uh, uh, one location of industrial estate. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, that all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Varanan, for your talk. Uh, let me see if I'm able to uh, start my video. I cannot start my video again because the host has stopped me. If you can do something about it, that would be nice. Um, okay, so we are going to be moving now um, uh, towards the, the, the Q&A discussion. But before that, we have a quick poll that I would like to put first. Uh, if we can start this poll, that's for the different speaker. Basically, uh, you know that we are doing this webinar series um, as a um, as a series of uh, on the way to uh, Chennai 2023. So from the Water Reuse Specialist Group. And so, if you are interested in doing uh, in, we have other topics. Uh, if there are any topics that uh, you think that you would be interested for 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 future talks, uh, I would I would like to encourage you to answer the the poll, and then we will try to to accommodate uh, your interest. So please, um, I would like the the participant to answer. Uh, to answer the poll and uh, let us know your interest in the field of water reuse. Um, and then we're going to uh, start uh, answering questions. So uh, of course, there are lots of questions. We're already a bit late, but nevertheless, we're going to uh, try and answer and answer a number of questions. Uh, maybe I would like to uh, start with, with Nupur. Um, Nupur, there have been questions for you and I have been looking a little bit. And so uh, there, was, there was first, like, I think maybe let's start with a very easy question, uh, with a very short, there was a, there was a question uh, related to a Chennai and, and a, that is sometimes affected by flooding and more generally speaking, especially with climate change impacts. Uh, it is expected that uh, there can be a lot of damage that is being done to those water treatment instead so how is it going to affect water security and how is how is everything climate proof can you maybe answer this question nupo see uh, when the utility is designed so all these safety features are already taken in place but to know more about the safety features we have to discuss this with the utilities and the company which is operating there so uh, maybe uh, uh, Dr. Joseph uh, can answer. He is from Wabag, who is uh, operating in Chennai. So, or we may come to the next question. Joseph, do you want to say anything? I, I didn't hear clearly. Uh, I didn't hear clearly. Uh, the question was flooding and, 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 and uh, reclamation plants damage. I, again, you your voice, your voice is breaking, uh, Joseph. Um, sorry. Okay, let's switch off again. Um, try again. Can you hear me now? Okay, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit better. A bit better. The question, the question was related. The question was was related about how to uh, climate proof those 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 installations. Maybe uh, this is applicable uh, uh, in India. Uh, maybe this is applicable uh, to 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 other countries. According to my knowledge, of course there was flood, no damage, the reclamation and, and and water and wastewater treatment. Um, there was another problem in uh, three, three years ago, there was a drought and it was comparable to, to Cape Town. There were, there were uh, road tanker supply and it was, the, the, the monsoon was delayed and Chennai suffered very much on water shortage. So, but by floods, there were no damage, according to my knowledge. Okay. 
OK, OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nupur, back to you. There was there was there was also a question about like the, the, the incentives to move to push the industrial sec sector towards zero liquid discharge in India. Are there are there financial in in incentives? Yes, definitely. Now, since government is encouraging water reuse, so uh, it has been incentivized and always it is better to um, enhance the water reuse in your own facility than to purchase water. So now the tariff uh, tariffs are there for different uh, locations across the country. And in some locations, uh, tariffs are really high. So therefore, uh, government in, is incentivizing uh, to use uh, the treated water. Uh, so this is my take on this. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, James. There were also a number of questions related to the to the to the Windhoek uh, case study that you mentioned, and maybe I would like to start with with the simplest one. Um, how much how much how much of the um, how much of the reuse is formal or planned, and how much of it is is informal? Because there was a question that maybe can seem very naive, but that I'm sure that more attendees are. Uh, if you are discharging to the river, how is this reuse rather than just treatment? So are you able to uh, clarify to clarify these gems maybe first? Yeah, sure. Um, so we with with the dry conditions that we have in Namibia, the, the river that I'm actually talking about is actually not a river, it's basically just a river bed. So the the uh, water that we are discharging uh, into the river is actually part of environmental augmentation. So we are discharging water into a riverbed which uh, which only flows during heavy rain periods here in the city of Intuk. Um, this water uh, uh, eventually underground uh, the Swakwa Port uh, Dam, uh, and the Swakwa Port Dam is actually uh, a surface water storage system, uh, which actually provides uh, from time to time water to the city of Ventuk. It's um, uh, via the the via dam water. Um, through conventional drinking water treatment and is actually then returned to the city for drinking water purposes. So we are actually uh, the surface water uh, catchment areas that we had here um, and then eventually the water is returned to uh, the city of Intuk for drinking water purposes. All right, thank you very much. There were so I stay with you, James, because because there were also a couple of questions about the new new nutrient removal. Because especially with with the abattoir, the, the the food and beverage, how do you deal with phosphorus and with nitrate? Yeah. Um, firstly, I did see the question about the phosphorus, um, and I, I think I sent a reply on, on the nitrates. Um, but the 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 phosphorus that, that is entered, as I, I think we saw with, with the various industries, is quite high. And the plant was not designed for biological phosphorus removal. We are dosing ferric chloride. Um, continuously, uh, and then these uh, precipitates are then removed via our dewatering process. So we are dosing um, anywhere between two to five liters per hour, uh, which is actually not, not, not too high. So our uh, ferry consumption is not too high. And our cost in terms of, of um, ferry usage is also not very high on the plant. Um, and then again, with the nitrates, we, we, we try and run as efficiently as possible on our denitrate process, where we are constantly monitoring uh, the process for the uh, various parameters to make sure that we, we are running it in the most efficient manner to be able to remove the nitrates um, from that system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm moving towards you, Varanand. Thank you very much for your talk, which was which I found which I found uh, very interesting. And so and so you mentioned first that uh, that uh, that uh, you you are using this uh, demineralized water. Uh, you are reusing it within the industry. You mentioned, but uh, are there are there other possible applications for the treated demineralized water that are being considered in Thailand? or in Vietnam, since you also have projects in, in Vietnam? Yes, uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, uh, 
for the other applications uh, besides industry, um, uh, frankly speaking, I, I in in the in the real market we 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 cannot uh, see much opportunity on that. It's uh, mostly is is for industrial use for the dimming water. You know, for that that uh, uh, quite a period of the water. There may be some application in the laboratory, I, I, I think, but uh, it's not the scale that we are looking for. We are looking for some scale like uh, a huge one that could impact a lot to environment. That that's what we try to uh, develop the project. Thank you. There was also another question uh, for 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 you for you, Varan, about like uh, you showed some day data that shows a decrease of the water permeability of the membrane. So so it looks like the membranes. So it looks like the membranes could be degrading over time. So how often do you need to change the membranes? Yes. Uh, um... It's actually uh, from our experience, uh, it's, it's quite depend on the on the operations uh, criteria. But uh, in general, uh, for the UF membrane, it's, it could be like uh, 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 five to six years uh, to be repaired. And for the for I'm sorry, for the UF membrane, it's like uh, six to seven years. And for the RO membrane, it's like uh, five to six years. That in general, but it depends. It depends on the quality and and, and uh, how you operate it. Some some in our plant uh, could be more than you know eight year for RO is possible. Thank you very much, Varanand. Um, okay, for the panelists, is there any other question that you would have noticed that? Uh, that uh, of course I had to uh, select. If uh, if if any of you have a final question that you want to attack uh, from from the Q and A, please feel feel free to 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 do so. Well, yes, um, Olivier. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, maybe Nupo first. Yeah, there was a question uh, about the ZLD, the zero liquid discharge definition that uh, one uh, delegate has asked. So actually, as per the uh, Central Pollution Control Board of uh, uh, India, uh, what uh, is defined in 2015 as per the ZND uh, guideline or the requirement that for uh, facilities, larger units discharging more than 100 KLD, so ZND is basically it refers to the installation of facilities and system which enables the industrial effluent for absolute recycling of the permeates and converting the solutes into residues. So those solutes could be dissolved organics and inorganic compounds or salts. So this is a very clear cut definition. And when it is applied, uh, so zero liquid discharge, when it is applied, we consider like to achieve the treatment quality, the wastewater quality parameters so that you can reuse. So this is the whole idea about uh, ZLD. And when we talk of uh, supporting ZLD through uh, newer technology interventions, we look uh, at integrating uh, advanced oxidation or any such technology intervention so that the load on tertiary could be reduced so that it becomes much more affordable and uh, compliable. So this was the question. I hope I could answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joseph, you were going to say something. Yes, um, there was a question. The, the cheapest method for brand disposal. Uh, Basically, we have to say there are brine disposal and, and beneficial uses options. And the cost of brine disposal or reuse depend, uh, regarding disposal, depend very much on the requested brine quality. Brine quality, they be standard and more and more there are standards. So it depends on the requested brine quality, on the location of the facility, is it inland or at the sea? And it depends also on the climate. But if I have a hot climate, evaporation ponds, for example, would be an interesting option. Uh, in order to answer the question, perhaps the cheapest solution may be an official reuse of the brine. Examples are uh, to and to accomplish zero liquid discharge without evaporation and crystallization. And uh, examples are quenching of refinery cokes in re 
Quenching of refinery cokes, it's a kind, a very cheap zero liquid discharge application. Or another, what I know is dust suppression by brine, with brine in, in, in coal gasification. So it's a very wide topic to, to, to handle brine management, concentrate management, uh, very uh, many options and so, each specific case has to be considered in detail. Thank you, uh, Josef. That you, you, actually, you actually reminded me that uh, talk, talk, talking about waste and the byproduct management, that I saw a number of questions about sludge management also. Uh, maybe, maybe can I bring this back to, to you, Varanan? How do you deal with sludge and uh, with with the with the sludge in the in the Thailand context, Varanan? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, yes, in in, in Thailand, uh, um, the very conventional way we we deal with the sludge is the we simply uh, 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 send it to the let's say that the the this person. <laughs> so that's a very conventional way, um, but. Uh, the, the better way is that we try to find the application on that as well. Some other, uh, some of the, the disposer, they, they use the salad and produce it as the fertilizer, something like that. So, so uh, it depends also uh, with the uh, uh, character of the salad. In Thailand, we have the regulation of the hazardous and non hazardous waste. If it's uh, defined as the hazardous waste, so it's uh, very limited in terms of, uh, 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 you know, uh, innovate it in using in some way else. But if it is the non-hazardous waste, yes, we, we can do a lot of things about it. Okay. okay. But, but so uh, the, sludge, the sludge from those from those industrial estates, is it considered as others or not non as others? Hmm. Um, it is consider the non hazard um, but uh, this is have to be remarked that uh, you have to to make some uh, proven evidence uh, in in Thailand when you develop the industrial zone uh, it doesn't mean that the factory inside industrial can dump anything into the wastewater treatment plant that is not in, in, in our country so there is the limitation for example you have to make sure that you don't release the heavy metal into the, the, the central treatment plant. That's why the sludge became the non hazardous waste. So, but in some specific uh, industrial zone, uh, for some specific uh, zone that uh, designed for the uh, manufacturer like crypto chemical, that could be the hazardous waste. So it is it, uh, it's not, it's not uh, uh, in, you know, uh, typical, you have to, to look into the detail of each uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, is, and is solved. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Varanan. I think that we are running very late. We are half an hour late. So I think that uh, I, will, I will bring now this, this webinar to, to, to an end, if I can get back to the main presentation, to, to the slides. Um, I cannot see the slides again. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Okay, yeah, I can see there. So I think that now um, uh, I just I just need to introduce the 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 next uh, upcoming uh, webinar. So and there will be a webinar on monitoring, modeling, and mitigating nitrous oxide in May. Next slide. Okay, remember the World Water Con Congress from IWA, you can still uh, register with early bird rates. Next. Um, join our network of water professionals. Yes, please join us on IWA Connect. And when you join us to IWA Connect, you can also uh, join our water reuse specialist group and keep informed of what is happening. Next slide. Thank you very much. Uh, I I just want to thank uh, our speakers to 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 a day. I'm sorry that there was a little bit of sound issue 
from the side of Windu, but nevertheless, I want to thank um, Joseph and James uh, for giving us this talk from Africa. Thank you, Nupur, for giving us the Indian point of view. And thank you, Varanon, for talking about, about, about Thailand. And thank you, everyone, for, for, for attending uh, this webinar. And uh, I hope that uh, you, you learn, that everybody learned something. And I hope that uh, you like this overview uh, from different countries from which uh, we don't necessarily hear about all the time. So it was uh, an honor for me and it was a great pleasure to have, uh, to have these four speakers today. Thank you again um, and goodbye and see you soon, hopefully in Chennai in January 2023.